Being able to catch speckled trout in deep water is an essential skill of inshore fishing and can be more challenging than fishing shallow. Catching speckled trout in shallow water is easy. Doing so allows for a wide margin of error, but catching them deep requires a little more thought and skill. Should this fail to happen, then you could literally be on top of speckled trout that are actively feeding and never catch them. In this guide, you and I will explore why deep water is so challenging to begin with, then reveal the best tackle and techniques to help you meet that challenge. So let's get started by asking the following question. How deep is deep water? When I say deep, I mean anywhere from 10 to 30 feet. There are times and places you can catch them deeper than this, but that is rare. Now, typically when you fish for speckled trout in deep water, they are feeding at the bottom of it. If they fed at the top, then they'd be easier to catch and there would be no deep water challenge to begin with. And a good example would be this fishing trip in Lake Pontchartrain. The water was about 12 feet deep, but speckled trout were feeding on shrimp at the surface of the water. So what worked best was fishing the top of the water column with a popping cork. But if they were at the bottom, then things would have been a little bit more difficult, which leads us to this next question. Why is it so hard to catch speckled trout in deep water in the first place? Well, because the only way you're ever going to catch a speckled trout is by getting your bait in front of her where she can see it. If she can see it, then she can bite it. This is called getting a good presentation. A bad presentation would be the opposite, or failing to put the bait where she can see it. When you fish shallow with a popping cork, let's say two to four feet, you don't need to consider how your cast and where you are casting affects your presentation. You just know that it's underneath a cork by however long your leader is. But when it comes to fishing deep, you would want to cut off the cork and tie on a lure or rig that's going to sink. Because it sinks, it is a lot more difficult to know where that bait is in the water column. That's because when a bait sinks, it does not always do so in a straight line. It could slide in one direction or another. Did it hit the bottom or is it still falling? Did it land where the fish are or did it glide behind them? The current could sweep your lure away from where you intended it to go or it could swing away on the fishing line it's tied to. The current and wind also push on the fishing line, which is an additional complication. Given these factors, it is possible that you can be casting to where a school of hungry speckled trout are biting and not catch a single one. And if that were to happen, it would be because you failed to get a good presentation on them. They never saw your bait because it went off target on its way down to the bottom. So how can we be more accurate with our presentations in deep water? There are two things you can do that will make a big difference and they're both pretty simple. Overweighting your rig and changing how you cast. We'll get started with overweighting. The concept of overweighting a rig is simple. You overcome the complications of fishing deep by putting a significantly heavier sinking weight on your lure or rig. A good example would be a Seabrook rig, which is essentially a Carolina rig with a one ounce bank sinker instead of something more traditional, such as a quarter ounce or three eighths ounce egg sinker. Another good example would be a one ounce jig head. It looks kind of silly because it's so much larger than a quarter ounce or three ounce jig head, but believe me, it works. One of my favorite rigs to fish deep for speckled trout is a heavy drop shot. And on this rig, I'll overweight it by as much as two ounces depending on the situation. The heavier weight works so well because it slices through deep water, reaching the bottom much easier than a lighter weight that we would normally fish with. The forces mentioned earlier are overcome by the extra sinking weight. How much sinking weight should you use? Now keep in mind this is just a very general rule of thumb kind of thing, but I would say that if you're fishing 10 to 15 feet deep, you should use a half ounce. And if you're fishing 15 to 30 feet deep, you should consider using one ounce or more. Ultimately it boils down to this. The deeper the water and the stronger the current, the heavier you will want to be. But don't go too heavy. By now you may be thinking, well, if one ounce works, then why not five ounces? That makes sense, but I'll tell you why it's not a good idea to go too far with overweighting. First, 
your rod and fishing line may not be rated for it. If you go too heavy, then you need to start changing the rest of your tackle, and that will most likely be counterproductive. Second, depending on what lure, depending on what lure or rig you are fishing with, too much sinking weight could cause you to lose fish, as it gives the fish more leverage to throw the hook. Third, it could cause snags. A heavier weight finds snags and gets stuck in them much more easily oh than a lighter weight. Ultimately, a skilled angler can use less weight to achieve good presentations in deep water, very much in the same way a skilled bowler is able to get more strikes without the use of gutter guards. So, now that we have overweighting out of the way, let's move on to the next thing you can do to catch speckled trout deep. Changing how you cast. Changing how you send your lure to the bottom of deep water will allow you to get good presentations where normal casting would not. See, most fishermen are accustomed to casting their lure out, especially when fishing something simple like the aforementioned popping cork. They cast it out and away from the boat because that's where the fish are out and away from the boat. But this style of casting isn't always the best when you're fishing deep for speckled trout. That's because you could cast past the fish. This can happen when more fishing line is exposed to the water, putting drag on your lure and not allowing it to fall as well as it could if there were less line in the water. This effect is more pronounced if the water is moving. The stronger the current, the stronger the effect, and therefore the more difficult to reach the bottom to get a good presentation. So, you will want to change how you cast using the open bale method. The easiest way to do this is to literally dump your overweighted rig over the side of the boat on an open bale. Just let it peel out line so it can fall to the bottom. When the line suddenly stops, then you know you hit the bottom and should close the bale. It gets to the bottom much easier because there's less line in the water, creating less drag, and it's not swinging on a tight line, but falling straight down on a slack line. This technique is feasible when fishing deep because speckled trout could be under the boat. This is possible, even likely, in deeper water, but rarely the case in shallower water. If you were fishing shallow, you would never plop the bait over the side of the boat. You would make a long cast. The disadvantage of the open bale method. But there is a weakness to this technique. It only allows you to fish under the boat or downstream of it. While it is very good at fishing those two spots, it doesn't enable you to catch fish that could be holding off to the side of the boat or upstream of it. This is a new problem, and the solution is to cast like you normally would, but with a slight modification to your technique called the slack line method. When people normally cast something like a popping cork, they cast out and close the bale as soon as the cork lands in the water. Easy peasy. But what you want to do when fishing deep with an overweighted rig is to put slack in the line. Do not close the bale once the lure hits the water. Let it take some slack off the spool. It even helps to lift up on the rod, then put it back down to strip out extra line. Then close the bale and let the lure take the slack out of the line. You're doing this so the lure can fall straight down to achieve a good presentation instead of swinging back toward the boat and missing the fish. If you closed the bale when the lure hit the water, like you would a popping cork, then the lure would not fall to the bottom. It would instead swing back toward the boat with the tip of the fishing rod being the axis it is swinging on. If your cast wasn't far enough, and if the water is deep enough, then chances are that your bait will never see the bottom where fish are feeding. The speckled trout literally would never know the bait was there to begin with. So if you kept cast in the same old way you always have, then you could literally cast a hundred times and never catch a fish even if there's a thousand of them down there. It won't matter because you would never get a good presentation on them. Is it starting to make sense how these small adjustments in tackle and how you cast make all the difference in the world? Are you seeing what separates the anglers who consistently catch fish from the casual fisherman who gets lucky every once in a while. So, if you're able to change how you cast using the open bail and slack line methods, as well as overweighting your rig, you will be able to fish deep water to catch limits of speckled trout. 
it's possible that fishing spots that weren't productive for you before could suddenly become new honey holes. What overweighted rig could I personally recommend to you? Throughout this video, you've seen a good deal of B-roll using spinning tackle, and I touched on a few rigs that you can use to fish deep for speckled trout. But there is one that I really like, and that's the heavy drop shot. See what makes this rig special, how to tie it, and the best way to fish it in this video right here. Tight lines, and thanks for watching.